Come to order. <laughs> I'd like to open the special meeting of Tiffin City Council for June 28, 2021. Order. I would ask uh, Councilman Gillig if he would lead us in the invocation and the Pledge of Allegiance. Uh, thank you. If you would join me in this prayer. Lord, we pray for our mayor, our city council, and all those that serve our community. Strengthen us with wisdom and grace for the heavy burdens we carry. May we manage our teams and projects with love. Amen. Amen. Join me for the pledge. <clears throat> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Councilman Gillig. That was very nice. Okay, I'll ask uh, Council Clerk Ann Forrest to please call the roll. Councilman Gillig. Here on time this time. <laughs> you. Councilwoman Yanatuno. Here. Jo Councilman Jones. Here. Councilman Leppard. Present. Councilman Perkins. Here. Councilman Perry. Present. And Councilwoman Boyle. Here. Let the record show that all seven members of council were present. Um, this special meeting, the purpose uh, is with Charter uh, section 3.09B, uh, um, we are announcing that uh, we're having this meeting this evening. Uh, the purpose of the meeting is for consideration to discuss the changes to the charter proposed by the Charter Review Commission and any other business that may be brought before this council. Um, do we have any petitions? There are no petitions, Mr. President. Okay, thank you. We have no minutes. No. Uh, do we have any committee reports? Seeing none, we'll move ahead. Um, nobody sees a need for another meeting, do they? <laughs> no. <laughs> we got a couple days left this week. I mean, we could squeeze some in. one in at the end of the month. <laughs> All right. Um, reports to the officers is on Aaron D. Mont. Well, since last meeting was so short, I figured I'd have about an hour long report. <laughs> there you go. No, I have nothing else to report. Thank you. Uh, Kirk Council, Ann Forrest. No report, Mr. President. Thank you. Um, Director of Law, Brent T. Howard. Uh, no report. Thank you. Uh, do we have any written communications? No, sir. We have no written communications. Thank you. <clears throat> All right. We're now under oral communications. Anybody from the attending public that wishes to address council, uh, please step forward to the podium. Uh, give us your name and sign in. Okay. Thank you. Do we have any motions? Oh, wait, wait. I'm sorry. Excuse me. <laughs> um, I'm going to, uh, okay, we have no motions. Uh, is this in an ordinance form? No, no. If, if I can suggest okay. one yeah. thing you right. could do is that Pull me out um, of the fire you here. could, you could, um, <laughs> you could add the, the purpose of this meeting to other business because it doesn't seem to necessarily fit in any particular of the uh, normal agenda items, um, but it would be other business, and and you could have the discussion at that time. Thank you. And um, and see, and there's no formal ordinance that is being proposed today. It's just to review the um, proposed uh, changes uh, submitted by the Charter Review Commission um, for for charter amendments. Thanks a lot, Director. You can tell I didn't think through that very well. <laughs> <laughs> you're you're fine. <laughs> All right. Uh, any motions? No motions. Uh, any resolutions or ordinances? Um, we're now under other business. Uh, we're going to uh, consider the changes that the uh, Charter Review Commission has presented uh, to Council. Um, we also have uh, um, members of the uh, Charter Review Committee. I'd, I'd, I'd like for you to be recognized if you. Kenny, you want to you want to announce everybody or? <laughs> well, you know, uh, come up here. And, uh, let's let, let people let people because you guys you guys did yeoman work here and you it was uh, you've worked at it a long time. So I just I'll just say a few brief remarks. That's fine. Thank you. Just so you know, this is our first meeting actually where we've been in person together hmm. during our entire time as a charter review commission. If you remember, we were elected at the end of uh, what 2018. 
start our service in 2019, but then COVID hit. So uh, I know the mayor also had to appoint a few more members on the commission because I think we only had four or five people that actually were on the ballot. So we needed a total of nine. So the mayor uh, had to get his appointments together. And then we had the problem of we couldn't meet in person. So through the city, and I know the mayor was a part of that, um, we were able to get a bunch of Zoom meetings together uh, during um, actually last summer. I mean, we're supposed to serve, I think, for 18 months. And we lost like the first five months to COVID before we had a Zoom meeting where we finally got everybody together. In fact, if I remember right, <clears throat> the first Zoom meeting we had, we didn't have enough, I think, for a quorum for purposes of doing business. So we had to have the next month after that to get started. So um, I just want to thank the city. The mayor actually was very instrumental in helping us get set up on the Zoom meetings. And of course, Audrey would served as our, our clerk and, and did a wonderful job uh, keeping us organized because we never met in person until just now when we're presenting these proposals to the, to the city council. The other thing I want to tell you is I want to appreciate the participation by members of the council. I know Mr. Jones was part of the meeting. Don Yanantuno, I know you were part of a meeting or two, and there probably were a few others. I know Dale, you were part of the meeting. The mayor was part of just about every meeting we had, I think. It had to be, right? Yeah. <laughs> Somebody had to That's run right, the, the Zoom meeting. <laughs> turned it over to Audrey to run. And um, we had some great input. In fact, I was on the commission 10 years ago, and we didn't have near as much input from members of council and the administration uh, in those in-person meetings 10 years ago compared to the Zoom meetings. And I thought that was wonderful. That was one of the, what I would say, surprising outcomes that was helpful as part of the Zoom meetings is we did have more participation from not just the council, but also from the community. There were interested people that got on the Zoom call and, and provided input. So um, I don't mean to speak for everybody else other than I'm the chairman. And of course, we have our vice chairman, Molly Depew. And if you, the rest of you would like to introduce yourselves mm -hmm. that are here, we know Bryce, go ahead and <laughs> you know Bryce. Who, who is that? Does he have a last name? Pedro, Bryce who? Riggs. Bryce Riggs. Audrey is our clerk. And of course, Karen Miller was also a member. So we have a majority of our members here today. A few of the others couldn't make it. But uh, I just wanted to, to thank the city for uh, helping us get through the process. We did it in 12 months when we should have, you know, had a full complement of 18 months, but that was because of COVID. So we appreciate it. Just in general, I mean, we all certainly are able to answer any questions you may have, but I would like to just interject that 80% of what we have as part of the proposed changes for the ballot really are um, what I would call minor, not very significant in terms of substantive changes, okay? About 20% I would suggest you might consider are substantive, and a lot of it's related to Tiffin's unique open primary process, and there was some clarification that we gave to that section of the charter that we had a lot of input from uh, people on our commission and also from outside uh, people that had an interest in it. So other than that, we certainly would, would think that the council and would expect the council would approve uh, the changes here so that we can have them on the ballot for the voters to consider. But any of us are open to any kind of questions you may have about the process or what we had as changes that we proposed. Thank you. Thanks. Do uh, any of the other members want to have any comments they want to make? Or oh. Once again, we really appreciate uh, your effort and all the work and uh, that went into it. Uh, it's great for our community. We've got people like you to, to do that for us. And, uh, you know, thanks. Thanks again. So um, I'm going to ask, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to I'm going to turn this over to the law director and let him um, work through the uh, work through the uh, uh, changes with us. So, okay. Brent, yep. thank you. And um, uh, Ken and I have not talked about this, but if it's okay, I'll go through and and uh, work through the changes. And uh, if there's anything that I say that is you think is not clear or inaccurate, you know, jump in, wave your hand, and I'll uh, I'll uh, defer to you, and we can um, clarify what needs to be. Uh, what I, um, I thought uh, the best way to start would be to give you a um, um, a list of the groupings of the charter amendments, 
and then we can go through quickly the, the actual um, provisions that are, are being changed. Um, and there may be, and this is not a final determination, but there may be seven um, ballot questions that you would, um, you, you would pass along to the voters. And, and maybe that's a good, good point to address the procedure. The charter says that you are supposed to hear these recommendations and then you approve by ordinance and I believe it's two-thirds vote um, in each ordinance to submit to the voters in the fall. And I apologize, I didn't nail it down, but I think August 4th is the deadline, 90 days in advance. I could be wrong, and I will get that um, definite date for you next um, at the next meeting. But uh, you should um, um, authorize legislation to be prepared as soon as possible, if that's what you're inclined to do. Um, so that they can be read at three separate meetings and allow for the, the legislation to go into effect. And we can submit this to the Board of Elections timely so that the, the questions can be placed on the ballot. Because it's not just one question for all the changes. It's based on subject matter. So uh, the first uh, category would be kind of a cleanup and clarification. And this um, involves various uh, sections. And they deal with... Um, uh, clean up and clarification of these different categories. The first is that you'll see, and, and as we go through it, you'll see that um, we're, we try to make the, the language gender neutral. Um, in the past, uh, the, the current charter has a lot of references to um, the uh, male um, pronouns, and um, we've tried to change that. Um, even though we have a language that right now says that um, if it refers to a particular gender, it means all genders. But um, we know uh, as decades go by um, that we need to be as inclus inclusive as possible. And so the effort you'll see here through the language is to, to make it a truly gender neutral throughout the, the um, uh, throughout the, the, the charter. So that means that um, that gender neutrality language is gonna be um, um, reflected in many provisions, um, and not just one, it goes throughout, and we'll, we'll go through those uh, real quickly here in a minute. Um, there's also um, a reference to a partisan primary. As you know, last 10 years ago, we um, uh, created an open primary and moved away from a partisan primary. Um, we have a unique uh, system that allows in this open primary for uh, candidates to identify themselves uh, with a particular party, but it really is not a partisan primary. And uh, we had a kind of an old uh, language um, that uh, in section 3.08 that had referenced partisan primary. Um, another section for cleanup, we referred to the finance director, um, but technically the position's called director of finance. Not, um, not finance director, just like uh, even though I may call myself at times the law director, but um, really the, the um, formal and uh, stated uh, um, title in the, uh, in the uh, uh, charter is director of law. So we've cleaned that up. And then um, as part of the gender neutrality, we use the term person. Um, and so instead of using some of the common um, pronouns of their or they, um, um, the, the thought was to use, and, and we'll show you an example in a minute, using the term person, um, because that would include all genders. And, uh, but it, when you use the term person in other areas of law, that could mean a business entity, a corporation. You may not think so, but there is statutory and case law in Ohio that does use that. So we clarified in section 11.06 what a person means and why it's being used in the charter. So that's uh, first is clean up and clarification. Next is in section 3.09B, we talk about um, notices of special meetings. As you know, uh, you receive um, um, notices hand delivered. Uh, but maybe there's another way, a better way, um, an alternative way. And uh, we give everyone from council an email address um, issued by the city. And then that could be a way of notifying council members of special meetings instead of just the personal delivery um, that we've used in the past. 
Um, next um, um, topic uh, uh, grouping is uh, the publication of ordinances. As you know, when you pass an ordinance, then it is, um, is published to the community so they know um, what the, the legislation is and they can um, read the title and if they want to, they could uh, get the complete ordinance and determine how, whether they have questions, whether they want to um, um, it, circulate a, a, um, a referendum a petition. And um, this is, uh, the method is right now to uh, publish it into a newspaper. But um, um, we thought that adding, uh, posting it in the city's website could be an alternative. Um, and you'll see this common kind of theme throughout, and it's not to necessarily suggest uh, the demise of the local newspaper, the Advertiser Tribune, but we just understand the reality of um, journalism and newspapers in, in our community. And uh, the newspaper may look very different um, in the next 5, 10, uh, 20 years. So we need to have some sort of contingencies for dealing with uh, possible changes. So. Um, Posting on the city's website seems to be a good um, um, alternative to publication in the newspaper. Um, I think even the language there is and. Um, so uh, we're trying to get it, um, um, get the word out <coughs> as much as possible. Next section is 5.01. We're clarifying the procedures for the vacancy in the office of the mayor's office. There was, um, if you had read through it, there was some confusion about um, how that vacancy should be filled. And, um, um, and, and even if the, the president of council cho would refuse and choose not to serve, what would be the, uh, the, the process for finding a, um, a replacement um, to fill the vacancy? The next uh, section is in, six points, um, in section six, and um, in several, three sections, it eliminates the residency requirement for the finance director, uh, the assistance to the director of law, and the city administrator. This is consistent with state law. We've talked about it in different settings about the um, state uh, residency requirements for um, employees of the city. Um, state law changed this um, over 10 years ago. Um, and there have been challenges. Home Rule has tried to say, no, that should be a local right to, um, to the change of, uh, of residency requirements. But there have been Supreme Court cases that say no. And uh, we, um, you may recall, 10 years ago, uh, the issue of eliminating residency requirements was placed on the ballot. And uh, this was the only charter provision that was not approved by the voters 10 years ago. Because naturally, when you read it, the voters, and I says a testament to, the, to at least uh, the community in reading these, is that they read the, um, uh, the proposal, and I think they would want um, the employees, these particular employees, to be residents of the community. But uh, state law says we can't do that, so it's unenforceable. Um, and so this is another um, effort to go back to the community and say, we understand your concerns about residency requirement, but we maybe need to educate them to say that we can't enforce this, so let's clean this up, remove it from the charter. Um, the sixth um, grouping would be to use um, to update our um, contracting uh, section, section 8.02. In reviewing that section, it, it, it needs some um, um, recognition of some of the changes in the um, state law that allows different construction um, and contracting methods. Um, and we'll talk about those in particular when we get to section 8.02. And then the last uh, section seven uh, gr uh, grouping is in section 10.01 uh, that um, cleans up some items in the open primary uh, nominating, nomination of candidates um, um, section. Um, we've lived with that for 10 years and I think overall the community supports it. I think we found that we like that um, our system that allows for in the nominating process that anyone can vote for um, any person being nominated or to nominate them in a primary. Um, you can, you don't have to just stay in your lane of, 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 um, of your party. Um, 
gives an opportunity for the first time that my wife could uh, vote for me um, in, a, in a primary if I was opposed. <laughs> she, she was a different party. So uh, it, it is more of an open, and as we understand, um, um, partisan, um, partisanship may not matter a whole lot. I mean, I look around the room and I have to think hard as what party you really belong to because I look at you as um, public servants, and I think most of the people in the community think that. So I believe that it's been well received by the community, but it needs to be tweaked in a few areas that we'll go over here in a few minutes. So that's the, the, the groupings, and there may be seven different groupings, seven different ordinances that are presented to you um, that, um, that you would then present. So just on the groupings, are there any questions? And if I can ask me any comments from the commission members, did that seem generally accurate? Uh, okay. So let's let's go through. And I know you know for uh, you know the commission may know that we were at a meeting starting at four. So um, probably everybody's looking at me. Go quickly. <laughs> um, but what if I can ask no. that you take a look um, if you have if it either on your probably all paper or electronically. If you look at the red line version of the report um, of the Charter Review Commission. So if you have that in front of you, I can just go through section by section and very quickly tell you uh, which grouping it belongs to, okay? So 3.06a, uh, that uh, deals with uh, the gender uh, neutral language. As you can kind of read through there, you know, we take out um, um, some of the references to, um, 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 we, we add the person's election instead of his. So that's a gender neutral change. 3.07 is also um, a gender neutral change. 3.08, and if I, I'm going to go through rather quickly, but if you want to um, ask a question or anything, you can just jump in and <coughs> interrupt me. Uh, 3.08, um, that's the section at the beginning that we um, um, removed the partisan primary language because we, we don't have that. That was just something that we could have picked up last time. We didn't, so that's just a, a cleanup. Um, also in that section, uh, gender neutral language is is contained. Um, and at the end of 3.8 is another um, gender neutral change. Then um, 3.08C, uh, again, um, gender neutral. And also um, in uh, 3.08C4, uh, uh, there's other references to gender neutral. And some cleanups, as you'll see later, that some of the, um, uh, the references to 5.01, we deleted one section that we'll talk about here in just a minute. 3.09B, um, that is the, um, the section that deals with special meetings of city council and how you would be um, advised of those um, uh, meetings. And it, uh, you can see it adds or delivering uh, instead of uh, uh, in-person delivery, but it, it also as you can receive it the notice by email um, uh, addressed to each member. So um, it's at your city email addresses. So um, for all council members, if this passes, you gotta keep track of your email, city email. You gotta watch that for any um, notices to meetings. 4.04 uh, uh, talks about the uh, zoning process and um, um, in that you know we have a kind of an elaborate if you will zoning um, process to make sure that there is um, adequate notice to the public on any changes to uh, the, the, the zoning anything related to zoning. And so we've uh, put to that that there should be a, a posting on the city's website of the notice of the public hearing on a, um, a zoning matter. Uh, that's in addition to publishing in the newspaper. But we do add a, a clause there that says that if there is such a newspaper, and that's the newspapers of general circulation within the city, and that's kind of a defined term under state law 
And if there is not a, a um, newspaper, it would be a newspaper um, determined by council to be of circulation in the city. So that could mean <clears throat> potentially um, the Blade or the Dispatch or some other new, new newspaper that may not be of general circulation, but it is circulated in some form in the city, and council would make that determination. Um, the posting that we were talking about um, on the city's website, just like publication, has to be seven days in advance of the public hearing. Next, in uh, 4.08A, uh, this uh, deals with uh, the publishing of uh, notice of uh, ordinances once they are passed, ordinances or resolutions. And you can see that it adds um, the city's website uh, by posting the full text of an ordinance. Um, so it'll add work for the clerk of council. Um, and we also deal with that same issue of uh, newspaper. Um, it, it is published in the newspaper by title only if there is a newspaper. But then again, um, um, you know, that if there isn't, then we don't have that requirement. We didn't want to set ourselves up for maybe an impossibility. Um, I think that's really kind of the, um, the, the essence of that 4.08A. Yes. Councilman Jones. Jones. Thank you, Mr. President. <clears throat> maybe I wasn't, well, I shouldn't say I wasn't listening. I get accused of that at home. Can we ask questions now or? Sure, did we go? Yeah, yeah go. On page four, and it says, council shall be in charge of posting in five public places. I think I attended one of the meetings. I never heard where the five public places are. I don't think that's been defined. I'm curious, is it the library? Is it my house? Is it <laughs> downstairs <laughs> up here in the zoning thing at uh, Molly's? Your house new, a public place now? Her new apartment. Uncle Mike's. Jones is, could be. Molly's moving. We can move it over there. No. But. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that is, it's um, by uh, council, council action. Um, and I believe that um, we did pass legislation 10 years ago that um, lays out what those public places are. You can change that at any time. It's, it's up to council to determine what is a, uh, a public place for uh, publication of posting um, the ordinances. Somebody other than me is going to ask that someday, and now it's not a good time to answer that. So, no. It's up to council's right. authority Thank to you, do sir. that. Right. Yes. It's probably a great move that uh, uh, the commission was looking for alternates because approximately six weeks ago, the Toledo Blade stopped home delivery in Tiffin. Mm -hmm. Oh, good point. I heard that. Yeah. So, again, respect for newspapers. I believe in them, but... <laughs> But we're, uh, <laughs> we love you. We, we want, yeah, we want the AT to be thriving. <laughs> well, we want you to have a job, Nicole. So. <laughs> and, 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 you know, it's a way of getting the word out about what we do. You know, a lot of people uh, don't tune in on Facebook or otherwise, and so this is their one way of knowing what goes on and keeps us all honest to do our job the right way because we know that they provide transparency. So. It's uh, definitely a necessary part of city government and democracy. Uh, uh, Jones, had a oh, go ahead. Uh, more so, a, <clears throat> more so a story. I, I think the commission did a phen phenomenal job. Yeah, very short. <laughs> phenomenal job of changing this to uh, also email. Uh, when I was appointed to council uh, back in 2017, I was appointed on a Monday. Um, and then we had Lincoln on uh, Friday, and I was at the Blanchard Valley Hospital, and my phone rang, and it was the Tiffin Police Department. They're like, uh, Ben, we're trying to get a hold of you. And I was like, what for? Oh, we have a notice to deliver. You're not there. Well, I'm sorry. I'm uh, a little busy right now. So I think the email will be perfect. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, section 4.09B uh, deals with uh, the codification, recodification, uh, and again, we're adding uh, posting on the city's website. 
um, and dealing with the issue of newspaper, if, if it exists or doesn't exist. Um, 5.01, um, the A and B, uh, that was combined because it all kind of dealt with the same kind of subject matter. You can see um, that it was kind of combined, if you will, um, referencing the, the little bit of the history of 1979, every four years uh, for the mayor's election. So uh, it was somewhat redundant, so we just combined the, the two sections together. Then section 5.01, um, it, um, it cleans up um, re some references to a, um, a party nomination, which again doesn't uh, exist. It has some gender neutrality language. And then also, I guess the most um, um, substantive change uh, in this uh, section is that under D, the new D, it uh, does allow for um, council to, if the president of council does not ch uh, choose to uh, fill the office of the mayor in a vacancy, then in the past, um, council would elect from its members a person having the uh, qualifications to be the mayor. Now, um, it's just generally stated shall elect um, a person, so which means that anyone um, from the community that has the um, qualifications to serve as a, an elected officer, and that's laid out in Section 11.01 .01 of the Charter, then um, then that uh, um, then that person's eligible. So it opens up a wider net. Uh, so it's just not uh, uh, the ones around the, the, this table that could be um, filling a vacancy for mayor. We thought that that was more appropriate because it may be hard to find really the best candidate uh, that has the time uh, to serve. Um, that's pretty much cleanup of that 5.01. Uh, 5.02 and 5.04, again, are um, some gender neutral changes along with 5.05. Um, 6.0102 and 03 deal with the residency requirement that, w that I talked about. So those are um, to comply with state law. Um, Councilman Jones? I got a 20 percenter that Mr. Egbert was talking about. Very minor, but suggest we change finance director to director of finance. Yes, I did. Make that meeting. What is the big deal about that, or why? What's the rationale behind it? Well, it's just consistency of what the the true name of the office. It's um, director of finance. That's uh, state law, is what, it, and it's um, it means the same thing. I agree, but proper title. But it is. If it's not broke. <laughs> Well, but we might as well make consistent um, language, and this is an opportunity to clean that up. So we have law director, finance director, and what's well, director of law, <laughs> director of finance? Those are the oh, official so titles. Got it backwards? Yeah, I'm. Yeah, don't call me law director. Call me director of finance. Oh, yeah. okay. <laughs> yeah, you can. I'll put that there for the rest of the meeting. Thank you, sir. <laughs> I'm glad my title's one, one name. Yeah. I'll, I'll bring the other 19% up later. Then. We'll have to watch that in our committee well, reports. According to 5.02, you're also our commander-in-chief. It's a judicial and military powers granted to the, mayor. the mayors. <laughs> Wait, you didn't see that RPG we bought? No. <laughs> no. Um, okay, go on to 7.05. Um, this dealt deals with the Charter Review Commission, and uh, we ha our current deadlines are to file um, the nominating petitions um, 75 days prior to the election, which is unusual. That's uh, different than um, the filing of other um, petitions that are typically 90 days prior. So um, the thought was to make that consistent uh, with um, with state law and other other filings, so then that we had to move back the uh, the date with the, uh, which the mayor must uh, provide notice of the election. Um, so there was just a movement of dates back a little bit um, away from the election of Charter Review Commission members, and then also um, 
in addition to uh, publishing in the newspaper, which we unfortunately we didn't find uh, enough people interested, um, we also uh, suggested that it would be posted on the city's website. Um, and the mayor also may use other uh, methods of notice um, using electronic uh, um, platforms as he deems appropriate. Uh, next is uh, 802, deals with um, the um, contracting authority. Um, and the, the, most of the changes, uh, I guess, we'll, let's look at, go, go on to really H. I think that's the, the most substantive changes here. And what that outlines in H is, um, is allowing for um, you to, the city, to enter into contracts without advertising and bidding uh, consistent with state law. Um, so it doesn't change um, the bidding requirement that you have and, and when you bid. What it does is it specifically allows for the city to follow state law in, um, in, in uh, non-bidding situations. And those are, um, some of them are outlined here. One is an emergency. Um, H1 deals with um, um, an emergency situation and the language some of you may recognize because there's been less than a handful of times that I know of in 26 years that we've used it. But there have been some times where you as council voted that it, there was a, as the language says, a real and present emergency or urgent necessity requiring immediate work. So we lay out that you have that right. It is under state law, but it's also now specifically included in the charter. Under two, and you've used this before, there's cooperative and state purchasing programs that does provide bidding, but you're not actively doing it. You know, through the co a cooperative program, there is bidding to try to get the lowest price. There's state purchasing that, that does the same thing. And uh, you, um, um, again, we, we avail ourselves to that opportunity specifically in the charter. The next um, um, one is uh, design um, uh, professionals. And as you may know, when we um, hire a design professional for public improvement, we go through a, uh, a request for um, qualification process. And so we don't have to go through the um, a bidding process. Again, this specifically allows for that um, to happen in the, in, with city contracts. Four and five um, address the city's ability to um, hire a, um, enter into a contract with a construction manager at risk or a design build firm. Um, about the same time, 20, 10 years ago, that the charter was amended, state law allowed for other construction uh, delivery methods. Um, and uh, they involve not only just a hire a general contractor to do work through a bidding process, but there is a procedure to hire what's called a construction manager at risk. And it's not a formal bidding process per se. Um, and this again allows the city to, to use that method. Example of that method was the Justice Center. As you may recall, we uh, were educated about that process. Um, um, John Larson's firm came down and had a, um, uh, one of his partners that um, um, dealt with um, uh, contracts, uh, uh, public contracts, in particular uh, public contract disputes, and knew very well the changes that took place. And so uh, construction manager risk is just a different uh, construction uh, contracting uh, method. Uh, same way with design build. Design build is um, uh, not a true bidding process. It is uh, a different statutory process. In five, we allow for the, the, the city to, to use that. Um, Finally, in six is a catch-all, um, as it says, if there's any other way that uh, we can um, enter into a contract without advertising and bidding, we are exercising our ability to do that. So that's uh, kind of a significant change. Doesn't really um, um, give us anything that state law doesn't provide, but it makes it certain that we have that full um, kind of uh, full options and alternatives and depending on the type of contract, 
you may want to um, enter into it using one of these methods and not the, the normal competitive bidding process. Any questions about um, 802? Um, there's, a, uh, there's a certain amount that uh, we don't have to bid it out at 50000 or something. Correct. And that's so, is that, is it, so item 6, is if that went up by, by, by the state, then that covers... That's right. That's right. And there's also language, I think, otherwise that it only says that the bidding is required if it is um, um, if it is a uh, contract that involves um, a sum of money that is um, um, more than the that the, the bidding threshold that you, you're talking about. Uh, continuing on, um, 902. Um, deals with uh, the finance director's title, Councilman Jones, um, and, uh, yeah, and gender neutrality uh, is listed there. Is this new? Director of Law? You mean? Is that a new placard? Or is I think so. I, I never had one um, in our uh, former um, um, His title's been the same, though. But yeah, the title has not changed. It's the same title. How comes I and six of call you law director? Well, we it's just that's, that's just that'll change. <laughs> I'll answer to anything. <laughs> it's a legal question. I'll respond. Okay, bigger, bigger fish to fry here. Yeah, that's right. I wouldn't uh, spend a lot of time. It's all Leopard's that. fault. Um, oh, it's all your fault. Okay, you call him law director. Well, it is. In the, if you look in your agenda, it is director of law. Yeah. If I mispronounce it, everything. Oh. It was Rich's fault. <laughs> yeah, blame me. In, um, in section 9.04, you'll see more gender neutral language. And then also I'm under D, and this deals, with, uh, <laughs> this deals with uh, recall um, procedures. And uh, we added, since it dealt with um, um, publication in a city newspaper uh, or in a newspaper, we also uh, said that the recall would be published by posting on the city's website at least 14 days prior to to the election. So again, it was we noticed that there was anytime there was a publication in a newspaper, tried to have a discussion as to what alternatives that there might be. Section 10. Section 10 is um, <clears throat> Councilman Jones. Thank you, Director of Law. <laughs> <laughs> you just raised your hand just so you could say that. No? <laughs> is it? This is in our hands now, City Council's hands. Correct. Charter Commission has done their due diligence. And I was going to bring up, and maybe the seven of us would agree with me, and I don't have it in front of me, I apologize for that, but 9.3 or 933.042 and 933.99 in the charter or the ordinances, well, charter, whatever. In the second ward, there's a property where they have abandoned cars. And someone from the police department even suggested that city council put some teeth into that language. And of course, we defer to you, but my understanding now, they have 10 days to remove these abandoned cars, if you will. If they don't, it's a minor misdemeanor, and a minor misdemeanor is, what, up to $150 fine. A month later, they get a complaint again from the same location that police officer goes down there, move these uh, cars or we'll give you 10 days or we're gonna find you $150. That's happened twice. I don't wanna listen to this for the next 10 years. So is there some way we can look at that language, well, put it before the voters, and I don't know who in Tiffin would say, no, don't find someone $300 a second time and don't find someone $1,000 a third time and don't put them in jail the fourth time. So I thought I would throw that out and see if anyone's. Well, as you mentioned, um, the, the section is a codified ordinance section. It's not a charter section. Uh, we're talking about charter. The charter deals with kind of the, the structure okay. of, your, you. of government. And you can, at the next meeting, you could bring up uh, the issue that you're talking about and probably a council committee could look at it and amend that ordinance to make it um, um, harsher on um, 
by penalty or otherwise. So, but that's that's where it's appropriate, okay, not you, not in the charter. Well, I'm I'm here to learn, and I'm I'm getting smarter. Can you imagine that? Me getting any no, smarter? Zach, Zach needs some stuff it's to dangerous. do. Okay. Section uh, ten point zero one um, deals with some uh, cleanup of the nominating process. Um, as we go through it, um, the first um, underlined section that talks about uh, the petitions. Um, so I'll set forth the name and address of the candidate. That, that language is, is just in another part of Section 10.01. Uh, so it's just moved um, from below, and you'll see where it's been crossed out. Um, down below in the uh, fourth paragraph, um, the petition for state, a statement of candidacy now will need to designate a three-member committee composed of qualified electors of the city to represent the candidate. And the reason for that is that um, when we get to issues of filling the vacancy of candidates on the ballot by withdrawal or by um, um, disqualification um, or by death, the state law has a method that allows for independent candidates that don't fall back on local parties, that they have a committee that would allow for those, um, um, those vacancies to be filled. And so um, the, the um, statement of candidacy that is presented to the Board of Elections needs to identify the three um, members of the committee that would have that authority. Um, th this came up because there was a question about, uh, from the Board of Elections, uh, one of the, um, of the members of the board had concerns about whether it was clear on what would happen if there was a withdrawal of a, um, of a member or of a candidate. How would that be, um, uh, be filled, that vacancy? Um, I think it would probably fall back on state law. That's probably what my opinion would be. And, and you'd figure out what state law would seem to apply when we have a nonpartisan primary, open primary. But uh, there was some question as to whether that would be the, the, the correct um, interpretation in those situations. So this is our opportunity to make it clear. And so we've used language um, from the, the statutes that apply when there is not a partisan primary. There's no um, candidate that would, um, there's no um, um, central committee that would fill if somebody is a truly nonpartisan um, candidate that they present. So that's a, the general explanation of what we're doing here in section 10.01. So go ahead. The candidate would. So when they submit the, um, their, um, their petition, they would fill in uh, the three electors from the community on their statement of candidacy. I know we talked about it, Brenton Charter Review, but what happens if that person forgets and leaves that section blank? Um, I think it's a, an invalid uh, petition. petition. Yeah, that's Just what we... like there's any parts. And we'll, sh we'll show you the petition um, form where it includes those three people. But you have to complete the, um, the petition in order to be... <clears throat> The board can look at it and decide whether it meets the requirements, and it um, probably would not at that point, I would say. Hmm. Um, on um, further down in section 10.01, the next uh, full strike through paragraph is kind of a lengthy paragraph on page 15 of the, um, the uh, comparison um, provisions. You'll see that um, it uh, removes the right of a writing candidate. Um, at a primary election. Uh, the discussion was that should there be a write-in candidate, um, and if so, when in the process should there be a write-in candidate? And I think the consensus was that um, in the primary process that um, it should only be for candidates that have completed this statement of candidacy and, and has have the necessary petitions. Um, that everybody should have the, the ability to do that and should um, that's not a big hurdle for them to do to accomplish but they should present that to be on the ballot in, in the uh, the primary 
The only time a write-in candidate really is necessary is, again, if there is, um, um, as we have it now, if there are not enough um, candidates that were elected in the primary. Um, so, for example, if there are not, uh, if it's not a competitive race, if there's not two candidates running for a ward council position or uh, the mayor's um, position, law director, director of law. Um, <laughs> in those cases, um, writing candidates would be permissible to make sure that there's competitive um, races, but there are deadlines for those. But So the only time a writing candidate would be allowed will be in the general election, but under only certain circumstances, one of which is that I said that there um, that, that, that there should be uh, a full slate of options for, um, uh, uh, for a particular race. For the, the councilman at large positions, um, if there's less than six, then write-in candidates would be allowed. If there are more than six, um, or six or more, um, then no write-in candidates would be allowed. Um, if there are two running for a single position, then no write-in candidates would be allowed. Um, so this removes that write-in candidacy in the primary. Um, down below at the bottom, um, we did add that the president of council um, was just an omitted um, provision that, um, um, although it's logical that there would be two candidates receiving uh, at the primary election, um, you see the, the director of law, the mayor, and ward council members' positions were referenced in that section. Uh, for some reason, the president of council was just not included. But um, we, we didn't forget them this time, and we'll add that uh, position. Um, set the next, um, on page 16, the next uh, large sections of changes, they deal with uh, what I was referring to before. If a candidate uh, withdraws or is disqualified, then um, the first, that first paragraph, if that happens, then the, uh, the vacancy um, is created, uh, is filled by majority of the committee of three um, on the uh, statement of candidacy. And there's a deadline for, um, for filling that, and that is um, 86 days prior to the general election. Um, and, um, and if the writing candidate has the ability to file 72 days before, so that would give a 14-day um, time period that if, say, there was a, um, a candidate that withdraws, then, um, then uh, and people aren't satisfied with the, um, uh, the, the person that's fill, filling the, um, uh, the vacancy on the ballot, then write-in candidate could um, file and and be on the ballot themselves, not in, in their name explicitly, but be qualified to receive um, um, votes in the fall. That language is practically verbatim from state law also. So is the, uh, the next section that deals with what happens if a, a candidate dies prior to, um, to the election. Um, and it, there is a procedure, state law, and we follow it here, that the um, majority of the committee of three can designate um, a, uh, a candidate or a the vacancy fill the vacancy if a candidate dies prior to the tenth day before the uh, the election. Uh, the next section deals with what I was talking about when a write-in is allowed. And um, the date for, or the time for filing of write-in candidate is the 72nd day uh, preceding the regular election. Then you see the actual statement of candidacy and uh, the addition of putting uh, the designations of the three, um, um, three persons uh, on the person's committee that was added to the form. One thing, one thing to note, we are council members. We're not council men and council women. Right. <laughs> um, 
Well, Rich calls us congressmen and congresswomen. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm mad at you. <laughs> Times are out. <laughs> Sorry, couldn't resist. Oh, that last meeting was vicious. <laughs> The, uh, the rest of the, the section 10.02, 03, and 04 all deal with um, some general language to clean up that we have an open primary system, not a partisan primary, um, and that um, we do um, allow for um, uh, presentation of questions or issues um, to um, to the, uh, the voters, um, and essentially, if we follow the charter unless there is not a, a provision that applies in a particular case, then we look to the general laws of the state of Ohio. If there is not a particular provision um, in the charter that directs particular action in a situation. Section 11 deals with uh, gender neutrality again, and in particular 11.08, gives that definition of um, a person in the charter. And it says the person shall mean an individual and shall not mean a corporation, business trust, a state partnership or association. And that's where you'll find in state law and other set, set situations that a person could mean um, a, a, one of those that that is referenced there. Obviously, we don't want that a person means um, an individual. Um, we, we don't want to elect a corporation to city council. So those uh, very quickly um, are the groupings and also we went through the sections that kind of show you the changes. Um, are there any questions? You know, we talked about some questions throughout, but are there any questions? Uh, question that I have is uh, within the Prior to August 1st, do we have to have approval of the language from the Board of Election, the State Board of Elections? No, no, because this is our um, our charter, um, and um, we will work with them, um, and we we do give the um, the language to the Secretary of State's office. Um, but I don't believe that we have to have that kind of final language. We'll work on it like we did before, um, but I, I don't expect that. I'm not sure that we'll get it. Um, but the timing is that um, if you, I would like to see some direction from council, if you can, even tonight, to have legislation prepared for these groupings, um, if you're ready to do that, so that we could have them possibly ready by next Monday. Um, in years past, we have worked with, and um, charters past, we have worked with um, John Larson's office, John and his office, to prepare the legislation. John and um, his partner, Heather, um, has they were involved in the charter process. They attended uh, by Zoom the meetings, worked on the language. So they're very familiar with this, and I would urge you to use them again like you have probably every 10 years since 1980 to um, help with uh, the exact language and um, uh, the process to submit it to the Board of Elections. So um, I, I think we need to keep moving on this and we'll do what we need to do to make sure that we get um, language that's acceptable to the, um, to the Secretary of State's office. But this is a little different than an issue language. Um, this is our charter. so. I don't think that they have as much discretion as the like the road and bridge levy and some of the other things that we've encountered where we um, um, the Secretary of State has more authority over what is a fair question. Um, here we pretty much have the authority of how we can ask the, the, um, the voters to approve a charter provision. Councilman Jones. How is this going to be presented on the ballot? Because 10 years ago, I'm sure I voted 10 years ago, if I wanted to attend some of the Zoom meetings with the Charter Review Commission and listen to your overview tonight, Director of Law, I would know what the heck I'm voting on. So is 
The, can, I, um, can I go back 10 years and find an old? Yeah, and, and, and I reread could, it because I say this is all, well, I shouldn't say great, but I, you got a handle on it, but so, let's keep saying the average citizen. Yeah, the, the example, the, the, the question should try to capture um, what. Um, is being um, asked of the voters. For example, probably the easiest one would be um, the, the one regarding the residency requirements. The question on the ballot may read something like, um, shall sections 6.01A, 6.02E, and 6.03E of Tiffin City Charter be amended to eliminate residency requirements for the Director of Finance, assistance to the Director of Law, and the uh, city administrator. And then we can put consistent with um, applicable requirements of state law. Okay. So that, and hopefully the question will be uh, that clear um, so people would understand. Um, maybe the cleanup and clarifications, that might be a quite a long, lengthy sentence, but it's gonna make sure that we, um, we tell the public, the voters, that we are um, uh, changing language to provide for gender neutrality, uh, elimination of references to a partisan primary, um, they refer to the director of finance for, uh, and rather than the finance director. Um, but those will all be lumped together with that much, hopefully, substantive um, language to tell them what they're voting on. Does that help? Yes, it does, yes. Anybody else have any questions? Councilor Perry? Got one question. Um, 4.04 section A, when we were talking about, um, I know we dealt with this a little bit for the St. Francis property, sending out notices to the adjacent landowners of you know the, the property we want to rezone. I feel like sending out some kind of notice with like a layman's terms, kind of what we're doing and why we're doing it would um, help um, I mean, save some of our time too, because people came to the meeting because they didn't understand what we were, you know, doing. So maybe if we could have like Matt Watson write up just a brief summary of like we're doing this, uh, you know, this land's being rezoned for this reason, uh, it won't affect you in this way. I feel like if we could add something, I don't know how to you even add something like that, but like a brief summary of exactly what we're doing, because I felt like it was a little confusing when you send that notice out because everyone, you know, was up in arms about. Um, what was happening when it really wasn't, you know, what they thought it was. Yeah, I, I, I guess my recommendation is that we, um, uh, we, we don't um, um, get too specific in the charter, but that's a, um, you know, good practical um, comment that we need to maybe do a better job of um, describing in the notice the, um, the subject matter of, um, of the public hearing. Um, so I, I think that's where we just need to do maybe a better job of that. I don't know that adding language would necessarily um, change our obligation to provide adequate notice of the substance of the, of the hearing. Right, okay. Anyone else? Professor Leopard. Oh, Kenny. Just a couple minor things. Uh, Brian Young, who's also a member of our commissions here tonight, he was outside when we got started, so we have six members of the nine here tonight, which I'm really happy everyone took the time to come to attend to support our year's worth of work there on the commission. Um, also, I, I am remiss, I forgot to mention, Steve Lepper was part of the Zoom meetings, and of course, Brent Howard uh, provided wonderful counsel as the uh, city's law director. Director of Law, excuse me. Sure. <laughs> um, and John Larson and Heather did a great job. And and as the chairman of the commission, I'm just speaking for myself here, but you know perhaps John Larson could help us out in not only with the ballot language, which I know um, Squires Patent Box does a great job with that. That they're the experts when it comes to proposed charter amendments. But hopefully, we can also have maybe a layman's type explanation that would go with these proposals so that the voters maybe can have a better understanding, you know, try to have it in simple layman's terms so that it's easy to understand. As Brent mentioned, like with the idea about the residency requirement, it would be nice if the question was asked of the voters, you know, to have this change to comply with state law and case precedent so that they know 
well, we're just wanting to comply with the law, even though they may have be uncomfortable about, you know, employees of the city living outside the city. That's that's the law, and we need to comply with the law. So maybe a simple explanation like that, and I, I know it's hard to, to say what that would be, but I think John Larson and Heather would do a great job of putting something together like that. Um, also, I, I did want to mention that if the gender neutral proposals pass, as a member of the commission, I would ask that all the council members would change their placards because they are gender based and um, everyone could be a council member. So Mr. Jones, you could be council member of the second ward, which would comply with the new charter provisions if they're approved. So hopefully we'll have that support and have it approved and you can comply with the charter just like with the director of law. Thanks. Well, it took us 200 years to get that right. <laughs> Thanks, Kenny. Councilman Leppard. Uh, first off, I'd like to thank the commission for all their work. It's, uh, I know at times it can be kind of a, kind of a burden, but uh, uh, I was on the commission once. I really enjoyed it and learned a lot about the city. And... Uh, um, it was a very enjoyable experience, and I hope that you all found that to be true. Uh, I would like to make a motion, Mr. President. Thank you. I would so move that we authorize the, the law director to prepare ordinances. Uh, to accept the... To accept the report of the Charter Review Commission. Thank you. We have a motion to um, accept the, uh, uh, prepare an ordinance to accept the um, uh, recommendations of the Charter Review Commission. Do we have a second? Uh, Councilman uh, Perkins. Yeah, I'd like to second, Mr. President. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Did you have a motion? No, I, I did. Oh, I, you did? Okay. It's okay. I'm playing favorites. It's fun. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, yeah. All right, we have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? Mayor. Yeah, I just want to really thank all of our uh, commission members as well. You all were a real pleasure to work with. Um, looking out there at all of you, the only thing I wish was that we had a, a Tom on the commission because then I could have said Tom, Ken, Cade, Karen, Bryce, Molly, and Brian, but we can't say Thomas Kincaid, you know. But uh, And then also, of course, uh, Victor Perez uh, really helped out with this as well. Uh, Victor's coaching baseball this evening, so... Um, he was unable to make it, uh, and also Mary Phillips and Toria Felton, uh, who were the other members. Um, it went extremely well. I know I was on city council the last time we had our, our charter review commission, uh, and there certainly wasn't this level of engagement. Uh, you all were, were a real pleasure to work with, and every single one of them brought something a little different to the dynamic and to the table with the discussion. So I appreciate it, and I hope some of you uh, consider in the future, whether it's running for city council, whether it's running for uh, Charter Review Commission again, I hope you all stay active, stay involved. We always have vacancies on our city boards and commissions, so if any, any of you ever have interest in being appointed to anything like that, uh, please let me or a member of council know. Uh, we love having good active members on all, all of our city boards and commissions. So thank you for your service. Thank you. Council Owen Yanatuno. Thank you. I, I wanted to thank you also for allowing us to sit in. It was I found it interesting listening to the dialogue and going back and forth, and I tried not to butt in. So I just tried to listen sometimes. and But I really appreciate it. And I think Zoom kind of helped a lot in some ways that made it easier for everybody to attend and made it easier for me to attend occasionally too. So I thought that was great. And so I wanted to thank you also. And just to comment on the residency, I think it's going to be an issue unless we really put something special in there because it, it comes up in everything I've ever been in with school board and residency is always a big deal. No one else? Any other discussion? I enjoyed seeing everybody's animals on Zoom, too. <laughs> <laughs> Talking about my kids? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, we have a motion and a second. Uh, is, if there's no other comment, I'm going to ask all those, all those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Let the record show that the motion passed unanimously.
That's it for the agenda. Uh, anything for the good of the order? Thank you for sharing with me. Thanks again to all of you for all your hard work. We appreciate it. Um, we're adjourned. Oh, God. Oh. Dale, I don't think I don't think Ann's going to be able to put my title on the voters the won't vote. Oh yeah, that's by that time. You know, I've got months. the longest <laughs> cabinet. Council member, council person. Council member. Okay, one word. I know. I can't wait to go eat. One word. Yeah, it's what was in there. Until the next council meeting, I'll drag it out. Or no, I said that, and he said, "No, you should be director of the city." I said, "No, no, no, you're gonna be fired." Do I have to call on you? Do I have the prerogative of calling on anybody I want? I could ignore somebody. I suppose. Robert Fuller, right? Yeah, may, uh, I see it happen on uh, Congress. Congress all the time. I wish you'd ask that sooner. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God we're not Congress. I know. I'm glad you're not Mitch McConnell. <laughs> Or Nancy, I'm glad you're not Jerry Adler. Or <laughs> Nadler. <laughs> oh, oh, I had a special invite to Good Shepherd home. It's not? No. But it fell on a regular council night. I My dress is in town. Oh, uh, she's not well overall. You guys said special invite. I don't know if they wanted you as a resident or what. Yeah. Yeah. Downtown development. Yeah. Yeah. We've done our part. we got everybody fighting on the same yeah. Facebook page. Yeah. Every year they have their bad deal. And so it's so so on council night. Oh, yeah. 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 They do. I don't know because I've never been able to. That was too much for her. Tuesday. That's just a date. Yeah, that's true. We did it. Thank you. I've been through it, Ben. I know. <laughs> yes, <laughs> catches up with us. I'm losing my voice, and I think we must. I didn't take my own. He might, he might. I take the Claritin type. Oh, he's a great guy. Oh, he is. He's, he's a guy. It's not your You can tell everything he's saying. I heard it. It clears it up for me right when I take it. He's a great attorney, really smart guy, super nice guy. <laughs> <laughs> that was a smart move. I stopped at mom's to drop the food off for dinner for her. <laughs> oh, yeah. And she has it. And I was in such a hurry that. So. I don't think so. We've got that sign. I'll get it distributed tonight. Yeah. Right. Three years and minutes. He says, <laughs> Take care. Well, they dumped that on Ken Egbert Jr. quickly. I said, Which of the seven do you kick him up with that director of law? Obligation, <laughs> I'll take blame for that. <laughs> Need help, Dale? Pardon me? Need help? Want me to turn? I, I'll turn these around. No, we're good. I'm just trying to decide when to order the new plaques. Yeah. <laughs> we got to vote on it, don't we? In November. Yeah. No? That's the pass. Wait till, wait, wait, passes, then. wait till January. Now, what is the effective date then if it passes in fall election. I don't know. So maybe there is no hurry. Yeah. Well, you can all take your old plaques home with you then. <laughs> you want me to put these down like, or and No, it doesn't matter. Okay. If there's another meeting in here, I'll take they them down. They can take them down, yeah. Uh, Thank you, Ken. <laughs> well, I thought these were going to be two shorter meetings than what they were. Well, hopefully this is the end of our gargantuan meetings for a little while now. Maybe we'll have shorter <laughs> for the next few weeks. <laughs> nice. Anything will seem shorter. <laughs> okay. See ya, guys. Take Good night, Kim. Good night. Mr. Nice. Thanks for all the help. Great.
you go set it up? Yeah, we went down to Cincinnati and saw friends, and we went on to Roanoke, Virginia, and has to been to Roanoke. Did you stay before. at the uh, Roanoke Hotel or? Yeah. No, we, uh, we stayed at a courtyard, okay. uh, just a, uh, an Eduardo type place. <laughs> <laughs> And then we went on to Cumberland, Virginia. We have friends there. We visited and then we stayed with my daughter in Springfield, Virginia. Three or four days with her grandchildren. That's a pretty state. You know, Roanoke is a beautiful area. Well, I went through a town that I didn't realize the Bedford, or Bedford Virginia, where the Bedford boys were from. They lost an entire regiment, um, 20, 20 individuals in a small town in Bedford, Virginia. Per capita, they had more losses in World War II than any other city. So they built this World War II memorial to them. It's a very interesting little city, but we didn't know about it. So next time we're going to actually spend a day or two just in Bedford, Virginia. What part of Virginia? Where is that? Uh, it's between Roanoke and Farmville, if you know where Farmville is. I mean, mm, what direction? It would be. It would be east of Roanoke, northeast of Roanoke. So is that kind of, is, did you go on the Skyline Drive a little bit? Uh, we did a little bit, yeah. 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 But the part of it was under construction, so we kind of got off again. That's a pretty area. I haven't been there in beautiful. decades, but it was been there and it's really nice. Yeah, they've got that star of the, on the hill in Roanoke. It's a big star at night that's illuminated. It uh, was put up there in the 40s, I think. Oh, nice. You know, I don't even remember that. I just remember, uh, I've been in Roanoke one time when I was a kid, and uh, we had to go to the hotel, not to stay there, it was just a famous hotel, but I had to use the bathroom. That's what my dad would say as, as kids, you know, we're not going to stay here, but we'll go and use the bathroom and see how nice the Hotel Roanoke is. My mother would always make us do that because she liked to see what kind of lights they have, too. It's like the lights and the toilet fixtures. I don't know what it was. <laughs> I guess because 